Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. That kissing George Bush on the lips is going to get me fired. Um, from my so, band, that is. So, um, Bono has agreed to take uh, a few questions. So I'd ask that anyone with questions come to the, uh, the, cent the mic in the center aisle. Please uh, try to hold yourself to one question uh, so that we can get in as many as possible in just in a few minutes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good How evening, sir. Sure. How are you? My name is Peter Hahn. I'm a, a member of the McDonough School class of 1999 and the MBA class of 2010. On behalf of the alumni, thanks for coming to our beloved Hilltop this evening. Uh, before I ask my question, I better warn you, I used to stand on that stage and sing your songs when I was a group called The Phantoms here. So uh, tonight I'll stick to the question. Um, I work at an organization that, uh, that cares a lot about this, the, the same issues that you do called United Way and works with a lot of companies like Bank of America and companies that are part of RED. And a lot of times it feels like it's a lot of the same people and companies at the table like we're preaching to the choir. So my question for you is, what advice do you have for all of us to bring new people into the work, and where should we go to find them? Thanks. Um, I was a, a big fan of, of The Phantoms. Your first two albums were great, and then you sold out. <laughs> um, but uh, as regards the companies, that works for, let me talk about RED because, you know, RED's, I think we're gonna announce it, we had 200 million by, by um, this World AIDS Day, which is incredible. But our whole thing with RED, getting RED partners, was it had to work for them, you know? And if you take two companies, uh, car companies or drinks companies, we think that if, if, you, um, if one becomes red and the other doesn't, people will, will choose the, uh, the red one. So we've just signed up Coca-Cola, and I said to Mutar Kent, who's a man I admire, I said to him, you know that ad used to have, Coke adds life? Now you can say Coke save lives. And if that works and they see a bump, they're gonna keep going red. And, and I'm sure what it is with Brian, I don't want to answer for him, and, and, and Bank of America, it's that it's about values as well as value. Um, and I think that they're, this generation is very smart about their choices, and they know that they can, they can play with the stock market just by what company they support by buying their, their stuff. And that's power, it's powerful, it's, we call it conscious consumerism. It's just, if, if, you're, if you're greedy, if you're just a company that's just, you know, on those attack ads, well, we'll buy somewhere else. And I think that's it, it's got to work. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Come to speak with us tonight. My name is Mary Beth Brosnahan, I'm a senior in the School of Foreign Service here at Georgetown. Um, my sister Claire is currently serving in the Peace Corps in southwestern Rwanda and living with three nuns. Um, to say that she, uh, you're her biggest fan is, is, is so much of an underestimate uh, and an understatement. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in the first week she was serving um, in southwestern Rwanda, um, her, the nuns that she was living with and her found this uh, three-year-old orphan left in a bush with AIDS and she's been taking care of him with the, for the last three months. Um, so I was just wondering what um, words you would speak to either uh, this three-year-old uh, boy named Francois or my sister, either in words of encouragement or what would you say to Francois about his future? Oh, well, thanks to the United States and the leadership in this room and, 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 in, and in, in Britain, I have to say, you know, in a, in a time of great austerity, David Cameron and the conservative government in coalition with the liberal Democrats are increasing their aid budget. It's amazing. And so I would say the future for Francois is 
in jeopardy, depending on if we can get more countries to follow the lead of the United States, and I just mentioned Britain, because it's not just enough to save that child's life. You want to make sure that child has an education. Girls' education is just the most, that's the, I mean, it's a coarse term, but that's the greatest sort of return on investment is girls' education. We, women transform the landscape of poverty quicker than men. And um, so, so, you know, it's not just a single bullet, it's not just, you know, global health, it's, it's agriculture, making sure farmers can, can deal with difficult climatic conditions. You've seen what, what happened in, in, you know, around the world this year with, with uh, the, the weather. It's terrifying if you live in Bangladesh, you know, um, not just in New York. Um, so, you know, it's complicated. But I do think, if you, if you want it to happen, and I speak to your generation, you know, across the world, then Francois is going to have a, a great future. You know, uh, every, an entrepreneur on, on every street um, in, in Rwanda. And I remember in Ethiopia, Malay Salami, the president, is dead now. He's passed away. He said to me, the farmers, you know, he said, are the smartest um, um, people in our country. And I said, why is that? He said, because uh, if they weren't, they'd be dead. Like the innovation and the smarts that it has taken Africans to survive difficult conditions means that in the marketplace, they are so sharp, so hard. I feel an affinity with the Irish right there. If you've known struggle, you're, you get good at, at, uh, at survival. Thank you. Hello, Bono. Uh, my name is Diego gonzalez Monster. I just want to congratulate you for giving one of the greatest uh, motivational speeches uh, I've heard ever. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was also told to tell you that uh, Ben Sherwin says hello. But um, my question is, uh, how do you think uh, we can promote investment as opposed to aid as a tool to try to promote economic growth and uh, political change in Africa? Oh, it's happening. I mean, this is one of the things I, maybe I could have spent longer on it, but that was pretty long. And uh, Fidel Castro, School of Speech Making. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's the key. It really is the key, is, 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 is investment. And, you know, um, one of the things we're very pleased with is, is a, it's called the Millennium Challenge Account, and it's quite an innovative attitude to uh, aid linking it with the fight against corruption and linking it with kind of business-minded um, approaches to, um, to aid and, and, and therefore leveraging aid to create the environment for investment. The corruption piece is amazing. Let me tell you, and, and, uh, and Pat he knows a lot about this, but, but in the Dodd-Frank uh, bill, there is an amendment uh, called Carden Luger, and it makes it law that any extractive industry, mining, oil, gas, uh, registered on the New York Stock Exchange, it is law that they have to publish what they paid for those mining rights. Sounds obvious, doesn't it? The truth of it is, is that right now, the American Petroleum Institute is suing the SEC to try and overthrow that. That is astonishing. And I know people in oil companies who are amazing people, and, and, and it's very important, your energy here. And, I, and shouldn't be, and it's not, in this case, a, a, a political issue. Europe and, uh, and America, Europe's going to follow this lead are going to make this outlandish um, opacity. And if there, that word doesn't exist, I, I'd like to suggest it uh, to the committee <laughs> of the Oxford Dictionary. Um, um, but you know, the, the opaque nature of these deals is corruption north of the equator. Because when you publish what you pay, 
then the civil societies in those regions get to hold their governments to account. That's one of the best things you could do to stimulate business and investment. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sonia Kakeri. I'm a senior in the SFS as well, studying international development. So this is really close to my heart. Um, and I'm a terrible public speaker, so I wrote down my question. Um, how do we develop the global citizen, the perspective, and the mindset? How do we incentivize people concerned with national debt to further prioritize life outside the US and the West? How do we preserve? Sorry, I missed that. Oh, the whole question? I mean, it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, good. How do we develop the global citizen, basically, in the mindset of like the one percent or people? You know, there's, there's an amazing website. You should go to it. It's global Citizen, GPP. It's, it, they're an amazing group. They just put on a concert in Central Park. Um, and they asked you two to play. We couldn't. They said, no problem. We've got Neil Young, the uh, Black Keys, Kanan, uh, the, you know, Jack White. I was like, what? Um, <laughs> Um, but they're, they're, they're really pushing this idea and it's, 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 it's a jump in human consciousness and, and I think uh, go onto that website, I recommend it, they did a great job. 